Alright, hey, what's going on everybody? Gratuitous here and welcome back to another video in our FL Studio Beginner Series. Again, if you want to stay updated with it, just go to itsgratuitous.com slash FLstudio dash beginners. You guys can sign up with your email and when I release these videos, you guys will get them to your inbox. In this video, I'm going to be covering uh, Portamento. So Portamento is a really, really cool trick that I like to uh, use in my choruses. It's something that you can really easily overdo. So you have to know kind of um, when too much is too much, but I'll let you hear the track I've created. I actually created this on a live stream just the other day. So those who tuned in, they got to see me create this track from scratch. And it sounds like this. And then I'll show you what Portamento is, okay? Okay, so this is the sound. So what Portamento does is it slides from note to note, okay? And what's really, really awesome is Ethel Studio's help manual, okay? So I know a lot of people don't don't like to read and stuff, but it's important. So here, if I click on like uh, the sound, one of the sounds here, and I just click F1, so you can see it's this polyphony box here, okay? It has the port the porta button, which is what we're going to be focusing on in this tutorial. It also has the mono button, um, and then there's also like. Um, the max number of notes or voices uh, that you can use. And then the slide it determines um, how long it takes in between those notes. I'm gonna break all this down for you. But so um, you scroll on here and this is really important to read. So I actually just found out what the difference was between mono and uh, portamento was. Polyphony is just like how many notes you can play at once. Portamento is the slide using multiple notes. Mono is just one note, but it, um, follows the release of the sound. So for example, this is just portamento. So I have it enabled right now. I've set up the slide a little bit and I have max two. Um, this means that I can only play two notes at once. So if I were to play like a chord, I can only play two at once. You can just put it to this and it just uh, allows it to be unlimited. So you can play however many notes you want. Um, in this case, it doesn't matter since I'm only just playing one note at a time. So how I like to use portamento is I really like to use the up and lower octaves. That gives you the most uh, dramatic effect for the slide. So for example, if the notes are kind of close together, you still get the slide. It still sounds cool, but it doesn't sound as drastic. So for example, if I play notes close, okay, but if I play them far away, okay, close again, far away. So you kind of get that And that was what uh, the sound was in the song. Okay. Okay, so I'll show you what I've done to set it up to make this sound sound like it is. So I'll, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you this off the bat. So I've only used one individual guitar note for this whole track. And I actually created a course on this. It's called Organic Beats. And in that course, I show you how to record a sound and how to use that same uh, guitar note for the whole uh, track. So for example, this note right here is this note right here is the same as the bass line. Okay, I've just affected them differently, which gives me uh, the guitar notes and the bass and the lead sound. So the reason why I'm telling you that is because um, you have to be very, very creative when you're composing a track using only a single guitar note. So what happens is if you just use the sound plain vanilla for upper and lower octaves, you know, yes, you can kind of stretch the boundaries and kind of get a little bit more sound selection, but what's going to happen is your sounds are going to start kind of clashing because you're using the same sound, the same note. So. Once I got into the lead here, I had to think in terms of, well, how can I be creative? And uh, in this case, I used portamento for that slide. So that's, uh, that, that was one thing I used for creativity for my lead. And then it also came down to uh, my sound effects. So right here, I have a lead. I've uh, sent it to um, some stereo separation for wideness. That's gonna help it stand out over uh, the other instruments. Um, on here, I add a distortion. That's another one because it adds frequencies to the to the sound which aren't originally there. So that's going to help the sound stand out. Um, and then I also routed it to this parallel track where I used chorus and flanger, and that gives it kind of like a detuned sound. So. So if I turn it up. So I just thought it was a little bit too drastic when I really bumped it up. So in this case, um, I duplicated the same sound three times 
and then I played uh, a high octave, a middle octave, and a low octave. So it would sound like this. So it's like the high. This is like the mid. And then the low. And then all of them together. It just helped to add some kind of fullness to that lead in the track. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm just going to right click and go clone here uh, to this sound. And we're going to name it example. And let's just give it a uh, yellow. Okay, so this is our sound here. I'll just copy this, okay? Uh, the, mid the MIDI notes, and we'll just create our own pattern. So, example. And I'll paste it in here. So this is the sound. Uh, it's just dry sounding right now. Okay, so it doesn't sound very good. Um, but now, if I were to come here to the example, and I click on the wrench, now, when each note would play, it's going to slide into it, okay? So if I go portamento, okay, so you can kind of hear like that slide happening. Again, you can adjust how fast, so you're not hearing it. But watch, if I go really, really drastic. So in this case, what's happening is the slide is taking too long, so that sound is actually going to sound out of tune in a bad way. You know, you can be using detune to add fullness or add thickness, but in this case, it's too long, so it's actually out of tune for your track. So in my case, if we go back to um, the one I originally created, you can see I have it about in the middle, in just, just in this track, you know, it's all about fine tuning for your track. But that's what I found was good. But in this case, I can just hear it away. You know, it's just a little bit too long, especially in these short notes. So I'll just dial it back just a little bit. Okay, so let's just route it to um, to a mixer insert here. And we'll just go example. Okay. Now all I'll do is like in this case, let's just route it to uh, some reverb. Okay, more reverb. Some delay. some wideness, some distortion, let's go lots of distortion. Okay, let's add some distortion actually on the sound itself. And you know, I'm just kind of just kind of showing you how I went about creating this sound for this track. Um, just let's just crush it because what happens again, uh, from one of our previous videos, since I'm putting the distortion on the actual insert, this is to do with the parallel and series. So since, let's say I turn the distortion off, the clean signal is being sent to all of these mixer inserts, right? But it's all being sent cleanly. So in other words, the clean is being sent to the reverb, the clean is being sent to reverb two, it's also being sent to distortion. So what's happening is the distortion is becoming louder than the other sounds, but I'm not getting like that gritty sound in the reverb and stuff like that. So what I can do is I can now apply the distortion on the actual uh, example insert and what's going to happen is the distortion will be sent to all of them. And then if I want more distortion on that distortion, I could do that. But what I'm trying to say is I wasn't able to get enough distortion there. So again, I'm just going to apply it directly on. Okay, turn it. Okay, we'll turn on this distortion. Okay, so in this case, let's just uh, add it in here. So it's not like this. So I just feel that that uh, slide's just a little bit too long, which is why I kind of got it to this point around here. And so I'm not sure if I showed you what mono was yet. Okay, so let's just go to the original sound I had. So mono is not on, and again, it sounds like. But if I turn on mono, what happens is it follows the, the release of the uh, original note. So what happens is the sound becomes quieter. But if I were to turn it off, do the same thing. Okay, turn it on. Okay, so that's why I do not have the mono on here. I just turned on portamento and I set my slide to about this and, and that's all I did and, the, and you know, the sound sounds like this. And then in this case, since I created this uh, 
parallel track with the flanger and the chorus just to give it like that thickness and a little bit more detuned sound to it because again I have to be creative since I'm using just a single guitar note for all of these sounds. So in this case, we'll just we'll crank it up, okay? Okay, so that's what it sounds like that I did with you guys, and this is the one that I created originally, so. Okay, so super simple. I thought I'd pass along this trick to you guys because this is a trick I use a lot. Um, you know, it's all about kind of knowing what options are available to you. And then once you kind of start creating your beat and once you get stuck, then you can kind of go through like that list of different things to try. All right, so I'm Gratuitous. Thanks for checking out the tutorial on Portamento. Again, if you guys wanna check out my course on you know how to create a beat out of a single note, again, it's called Organic Beats. I'll leave the link in the description below if you wanna check it out. Hopefully this tutorial helps you out. And if, you know if you guys wanna stay updated on future videos, you know, just subscribe and I will see you in future videos. Oh,